Good morning. It is Elisa James with another experts interview here live on Facebook and also in YouTube today. Thank you so much for joining us live. Now, as usual, I have a fantastic guest here this morning and we're going to be talking about dun 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 raising emotionally intelligent children. Now, this is a very important topic today. There's so many people out there that have really had enough, enough of the lockdowns, enough of the stress, enough of the mental health disorders that we're all suffering from right now because we're going through a big world pandemic that is really affecting people on many levels of life. Now, when we're in family at home and many of us around the world are in lockdown, I am here in Sydney too and have been for months, it can really start to take its toll. The kids start climbing up the walls. The adults are trying to homeschool and deal with emotional upheavals every single day. So this is a really important topic today, and that's why my beautiful guest, Stephanie, is going to come on shortly. Stephanie Pinto is an emotional intelligence coach who specializes in helping parents to create emotionally intelligent family culture at home. She's a certified emotional intelligence specialist and is a trained pediatric anxiety therapist and practice as a speech pathologist for more than 10 years. So you are in fantastic hands today. Please welcome to the show, Stephanie Pinto. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. My goodness. This is so timely. There are so many people that are really struggling out there. You know, I'm teaching every single day and on on Zoom, and sometimes people break down. They're really struggling with their mindset right now. So mindset and this sort of work has never been so important as it is right now. So I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for giving your time this morning. I really appreciate that. Now, for all our fans here on Facebook and on YouTube, this is the way you'll see this is working today. If you're seeing this on YouTube, you're seeing it on the Voice of Confidence TV. Anytime during the week, you can go there and watch any of the replays on my channel. I've got well, dozens, almost 100 videos up there, loads of video content, absolutely free. And every Friday, we do this live stream with experts interviews. So you'll see this. If you're seeing this on a replay, please put hashtag replay underneath. If you're watching it live, we can see your comments. So if they're clean and politically correct or not political or not religious, I am happy to show those comments on the screen. If you have a pressing question that you'd like to ask for Stephanie to get involved in this discussion today, please just comment below the video. And the same thing as if you're watching us on Facebook, inside the Find Your Voice Aspiring Speakers Club. We can see your comments. Just allow StreamYard to see your comments and we can bring you straight on the screen. So here we are. We've got the first comment in and it's Chris from Belgium. Thank you so much for joining us live from Belgium. It must be very late there. So thank you so much for staying up late and joining us absolutely live. So today it's all about how to raise emotionally resilient kids. So can you tell me, how you got started on this journey? Like what brought you into this work in the first place? Oh my goodness. Do you know what? I actually do love this question, even though I, you know, I I talk to so many people and explain how I got where I am. I feel like it's important, not just for me, but for other parents to hear why emotional intelligence is so important for our kids. So in a nutshell, I had zero emotional intelligence as a child. I didn't realize it at the time. But I was learning to, you know, say, um, be a good girl, be a people pleaser, not show my emotions. Um, I learned to show the good, happy emotions, not those unpleasant ones. So much so because I wanted to fit in and wanted to be accepted and yada, yada, that I squashed all of those emotions down. I had no emotional intelligence, emotional awareness, coping skills, calming strategies, any of that stuff. So... I wasn't one of the kids who blew up and, you know, got to manage our emotions and lashed out or were aggressive. You know, I went inward and I shoved them down and I squashed them and I was a good girl. I had great grades. I had great friends, but I developed a crippling anxiety. 
I also didn't know that at the time because I had no emotional awareness, no emotional intelligence. Um, And all I knew was that when I got quite nervous and anxious, I would faint. (gasps) So that was my that was my yep, stress yep. response. I didn't just get the heart racing, the um, sweaty hands. I went from what I thought was zero to a hundred. I thought, oh my gosh, I can't do this. It's an assembly. It's a job interview. Um, I was doing, uh, as you said, I was a speech pathology student on an acute stroke ward on my first day, got really nervous, fainted in the hallway. <laughs> so, so I had zero skills. How to and make so a good I- first impression. Hi. Oh <laughs> Honestly, like I, I woke up, oh I came to God, in one of those awesome. I came to in one of those beautiful little family rooms where the family sits with a couch and a TV and about five people around me and a crash cart and they said we got the crash cart because we really couldn't find your pulse. It was so low. Like you know when your body it's it's wow. so far at the end of the spectrum where you cannot manage or deal with what is coming at you, what is coming at me. And so your body shuts down and preserves. Um, and I was yeah. like, I'm fit, I'm healthy, wow. I saw doctors, da, da, da. Um, it was all my emotions and the fact that I had no awareness and emotional intelligence and zero resilience. And I just want to, like, get across to parents that you don't need or your children don't, don't need to have big capital T trauma and things um, that go wrong for them to need this stuff. It's everyday kids. We, I want to spread this to all families and all parents so they yeah. have it. They have the tools um, within their within their toolkit, you know, it's, it's about creating an emotionally intelligent family culture. It's just how we are, what we say, what we do, and we raise kids in yeah. this way. Yeah. Look, and I think you've made a really good point. And I see this with my clients as well. And of all ages, we usually go two ways and that is either hold it in or let it burst out. It, and it's, and it's only because we don't have the tools to actually deal with it smoothly with grace <laughs> you know so we we tend to go either way and I think you're absolutely right when I was a baby too I remember my mom telling me when I was really young my way of coping was to hold my breath and then I would go blue and pass out and then she would do it and take me to the doctor and of course I wouldn't do it and so I, she had no witness <laughs> and it was all, all that for quite a few years but yeah these things happen and a lot of kids go the other way they don't deal with anything they get triggered and then they explode So I've seen that many, many times and go both ways. And I think that what happens over time with with us, you know, growing up with this way, keeping everything inside, is you get to a certain point as a teenager, so watch out, mums and dads, and then you go, I can't deal with this anymore, and then you go the other way because you cannot hold it in any longer. It's like a time bomb ready when to go off. So why is this so important for us to get hold of now? Like why do we need to learn this? Emotional you know what? EQ. Oh, yes. Um, so, so first when we talk about emotional intelligence, EQ, um, EQ strictly speaking stands for emotional quotient, which is like the measure yeah. of one's emotional intelligence, similar to IQ, but we just use it interchangeably. Right. So if I'm saying EQ, I'm talking about emotional intelligence. And right. the reason there there is so much research now so much information that we have over the last 20 30 years that has come up to the surface and that's been done on emotions behavior neuroscience underneath emotions and behavior for our kids um our parents didn't have this information when we were growing up right so they they did the best they could of course um 99.999% of parents do and but yet they didn't have this information about how to help their kids navigate through some of those big emotions so um I often go through when I'm doing a webinar or workshop or something I say look guys here are the top 10 reasons that I've gathered from research it's not just my opinion as to why emotional intelligence is so critical for our kids and some yeah. of those really big ones that parents like resonate with parents, they go, yeah, number three and number five, you know, they, they, they pick out those ones. Some of them are that emotional intelligence skills is having those skills is a protective factor against anxiety and depression. So yeah. it actually supports our kids ability to um, express their emotions, not bottle them up, not let them blow up, but have that um, awareness of their emotions, be able to express them and regulate them, you know, with, yeah. with help, of course. Yeah. So um, it's a protective factor. Uh, kids with emotional intelligence skills have more emotional self-awareness, of course. They have more, they are more empathetic. Mm-hmm. 
They have closer relationships with their parents, which I love <laughs> as a parent. Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. my gosh. It helps them to uh, deal with conflict, um, conflict resolution, which happens in that's not just an adult term in, you know, um, workplaces, but it's in the playground, in the classroom with siblings and things like that. And we actually know that um, kids with emotional intelligence skills are less likely to turn to drugs and alcohol when they are in those later teen years to manage big emotions, strong emotions, um, right. difficult things, adversities, which we know are inevitable. So yeah. it just yeah. builds that resilience. I think it's a no-brainer for me. Yeah, look, absolutely. And I'm, I'm right on the same page. This is so important for everybody. So what are the impacts of kids that not that don't have these EQ skills? Well, how does yeah. that play out in the classroom and the playground mm. from your experience? Well, I want to, I don't want to answer a question with a question, but have you seen or do you know those kids who do <laughs> seem to go from zero to 100 and blow up at the slightest um, thing that has happened you know they struggle to share or to think of others yep. they seem very egocentric and very selfish so they're lacking that empathy uh, yep. they can't mat this was me they I could not deal with conflict or with arguments or with disagreements couldn't do it I just crumbled mm. even in yep. my first relationship with my more or less with my boyfriend who's now my husband if we had an argument, oh, my God, I would crumble and I would fall apart. I did not have any strength, any um, skills to deal with those difficult situations and speak up. So yeah. not having um, emotional intelligence in the classroom, in the playground, it impacts relationships, uh, that sense of confidence as well, their resilience. And we actually also know as well from research <clears throat> that kids who lack emotional intelligence actually perform worse academically than those who do have emotional intelligence. And when I first wow. looked at that piece of research, I thought, where is that coming from? Like, you know, let's, let's nut that out. It's because when a child is able to manage big emotions, things that are going on in their life, maybe mum and dad having issues at home or that boy who said he's going to get me at recess or this test that I'm so nervous about and I have anxiety, when you can manage those emotions and yeah. deal with them and have some coping strategies, which is emotional intelligence, then you are able to uh, perform better and do better on the test. You're able to listen to the teacher and absorb the information. Your mind isn't like worried about all the other stuff, emotional stuff that's going on. So huge impacts. Yeah. And it looks like, oh my goodness, I can't, I, I want to start straight away. <laughs> <laughs> it's I love what you do it's so br brilliant let's just change tack here because we've got a few comments coming in let's have a look we've got beautiful ice is here good morning pretty women I'm super excited about this interview very timely topic which is great and Chris from Belgium has chimed in and said so true because people think rationally not rationally but emotionally yes mm -hmm. they're not and when you don't have those skills we get triggered and we just react instead of respond. Yes. And this is what's going on. Children don't have those tools yet. And so if we don't have the tools as parents, I remember this happened at my my home many, many times that my, our parents would, I would get triggered, my parents would get triggered, and then everybody just blows up. It's like, well, if that's your dynamic, what are we going to recreate as adults? What we know. Right. So this is the I think you're doing the right thing because you you've got to start with the parents teaching them these e emotional intelligence skills, because we have to be a role model and not tell them what to do. I remember <laughs> my parents just telling us what to do. Right. Telling us how dare you blow up or how dare you lose your temper or whatever. But they're allowed to use, lose their temper. We're not. So we can't do that to our children because it, it doesn't work. It absolutely it's not not effective as as we know. Steph and I know because lots of people like us grew up in explosive households where it wasn't accepted that we spoke out or allowed our emotions to show in any way. We were shut down. So we want to actually balance that out as, as much as we can. So how can how do you help parents bring these EQ skills into the home more? Mm. Well, you just touched on something that really light bulb momented for me is that we need to have 
uh, we need to be able to manage our emotions and our triggers before if we want to be able to uh, cultivate this in our kids. So I yeah. always say that if we want to raise emotionally intelligent kids, we first need to become emotionally intelligent parents, which means okay. we kind of got to turn our eyes inward and see what we're doing, how we're showing up, how we are managing our emotions or not, um, and how we're getting yeah. triggered and what that what that impact is um, having on our kids and our connection. So, yeah. um, you know, managing some of, doing some work, I suppose, on ourselves first so that we can then model this to our kids. And so yeah. for me it's about, you know, bringing it into the home can be so simple in that you're opening the conversations, you're opening that can, um, whereas maybe before you guys didn't talk about it so much, how you're feeling, what's going on, what happened, what's coming up for you, da-da-da. Like that wasn't so much in my home growing up and I didn't learn that, you know, it was it was normal or natural to talk about emotions. So yeah. I think normalize it, normalize it, you know, that we Love talk that. about emotions yeah. um, and uh, have the conversations. There are, if you have younger kids, like preschool or primary school age kids, there is such an abundance of resources and tools and books out there now, even in the local shops like Kmart and Target and things like that. If you're in Australia, you know, you don't need to go to a specialized bookstore. Uh, there are beautiful books on emotions and stories and feelings and things like that that kind of take the pressure off us as adults if we want to start having those conversations. Um, it's just about normalising it, bringing it into the home, having the conversations, noticing emotions in other people on TV and characters and things like that and um, just taking away, I think, that stigma of, you know, we don't talk about emotions or sweep them under the rug or they're messy, they're fluffy, they're childish. Um, yeah. We don't want to hear that. Come, you know, go to your room, come out when you're calm. Like getting rid of that mentality and being with our kids, connecting with them in those hairy, noisy, loud moments rather than saying go away and whenever you just simmer down and, and get over it and time passes, then then I'm ready to chat to you. So that, that in itself sends a big message, shifting that dynamic. Yeah, look, absolutely. And I think I think you're right. That it, the main problem that we have is that when the parents allow their triggers to get out of control, of course the child has has nowhere to go. They can't they can't assess things because they don't have the tools. So we have to be the bigger the bigger person in the picture. We have to be the adult in the room and then stand up and then watch our own triggers and make sure that we don't trigger. And this has been a real, you know, a real learning curve for me, Steph, because I grew up like you did in, in a very different environment. And so I raised my son, probably very similar environment as well. And he had lots of issues growing up the same as I did. And we're still navigating all those through and he's 36 now. So we're still, you know, working out all those patterns of behaviours. But now that I've become a mum again and I have two little children um, through my, my partner, this has been a real eye-opener for me because I did not want to recreate what I did the first time unintelligently. It's been mm. such a great gift to have this older wisdom and say, okay, I can feel myself getting triggered because of that bullying that went on when I was seven you know, or something. And so me getting triggered is not going to help the little girl that I'm trying to help right now. It's not going to help at all. I've got to really watch my my mood, my temper, my words, my my triggers myself to be a really good role model. And that takes a lot of mindfulness, my goodness, but it does change things massively. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting. We just got a few more comments coming in. Let's, let's have a look here. Mm -hmm. So Facebook user, because we don't know, um, they didn't allow StreamYard to see the comment. That's what we usually see. So thank you so much for commenting. We don't know who you are. We'd love to know your beautiful name. Yes, and managing the big feelings we are all having, we are all having with the pandemic. Absolutely. Yes, the whole world is in this right now. We, we all need tools and resources to be able to deal with our own feelings and our own mindset and our own world to make sure that we can come out of this okay. And Isis said, oh, my gosh, so true. Thank you for bringing this up, Stephanie. We need to be reminded and this reminded about this as all parents, as parents all the time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Chris has also said, 
I grew up in an environment where emotions were not shown. Yes. Yeah. Yet how many of us did? Mm. How many of us grew up in this? But it's never too late, guys. We've got Steph here. So tell people how they can work with you. What does that look like? Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Look, I'd love if anyone wants to have a chat and um, speak to me about what's coming up for them and if they need some support. And even, um, you know, sending me a message on um, Facebook is an easy way to find me on my website as well. There's a space where you can contact me and have a chat. And that's just through stephaniepinto.com. Uh, right, and if you, yeah, screen. if you're wanting to sort of join the conversation <laughs> about this and see how you can just start bringing elements of it into your life and into your home and into your family, then I would love you to join my Facebook group, which is called Let's Raise Emotionally Intelligent Kids. That group, um, right. honestly, the I can see this is resonating with people. There is such momentum. It's just growing day by day. People are flooding in and really wanting to learn how to do this um, with their family. So get in touch in one of those ways. Um, I would love to have a chat and see what we can do. Yeah, look, absolutely. And you'll see these links underneath the video that you're watching right now. So if you're on Facebook, my beautiful assistant Isis put all the links how to contact Steph on there. You can share this, please. If your parents watching this and you know somebody that's suffering in silence and really struggling, please put them in contact with Steph. Share the video, share, share, share. Let's get it out as as far and wide as we can so we can help as many people as we can. The same as if you're watching this on YouTube, I will make sure that these links go directly underneath this video so you can share that as well and, and get the word out. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. If you were going Thank to leave one little golden nugget for the parents out there today, what would it be? Ooh, golden nugget. Um, I think I have to come back to the work on, you know, your your own emotions and, and your own triggers first. So, yes, yeah. we want to raise emotionally intelligent kids and maybe I want to sort out some of these big emotions my kids are having. But um, like you said, Elisa, if we are not managing those triggers and they bubble up and we flip our lid and we say or do something we regret or we shout or we smack, you know, we are not... Um, coming <clears throat> from a place of calm and compassion and understanding and love with our kids, we are literally just adding fuel to the fire. <laughs> so yeah. start there, yeah. start with yourself. It's it's so much easier and more beneficial to have your yourself sort of crown, grounded and in that right mindset and then you can bring it into your family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your love, your support, your passion, your enthusiasm for what you do, because mm. one person at a time, you're changing the world, which is super important. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> you're very, very welcome. It's been my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the show, everyone. Today, this is Experts Interview. I'm your host, Elisa James, Holistic Voice and Presentation Coach. You've got all those links underneath the platform that you're watching. So get in touch with Steph, get involved and start getting emotionally intelligent. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>